Good morning. I probably should have turned this camera on before I turned the engine on. Sorry about that. So today I am off to my first of six little art classes. I'm doing a botanical drawing class, which is really exciting. It's Saturday morning and I signed up for it and paid for it months ago. And today's the day for the first one. Anyway, let's get going and um, see you there. So I booked this course through the um, local adult ed. And honestly, if I'd have known that it was using pencils, as in colouring pencils, professional grade colouring pencils, and if I'd have known that we would be working on one picture over six weeks and that picture was going to be of strawberries and leaves, I don't think I would have booked on it. However, that probably means that I really need to be on this course because these are all things that I don't really want to do. I don't really want to colour with colouring pencils um, and I wouldn't have picked this picture at all, but it is forcing me to really look at a subject um, in a way that I possibly, probably wouldn't have looked at before. So actually it's pushed me right outside of my comfort zone and I'm really, really, really glad that I did book on it. Also, the interesting thing that we were told on session one is that botanical art is a science. There is no creativity involved in it whatsoever. All you are doing is replicating exactly what the plant is showing you because it becomes a reference material ultimately. And I hadn't realised that about botanical art and that's really exciting to me because that's not the type of art that I've ever done. It's my stuff has always been very whatever I'm feeling in that moment and whatever materials or supplies I have in front of me. It's always been extremely creative, never like critical like this is. Good morning, lovely people. Welcome back. We've got quite a busy day today. I need to pack some orders and there's a new product that I want to create and then list on the online shop. So let's see how that goes. Also, I just want to show you something. Whoop, whoop, let me turn you around so you can see. Very exciting. Look what we just did. We just hit 20,000 subscribers over here. So thank you. I appreciate every single one of you so, so much. Thank you. How cool is that? That has taken me years. I think I've been on here four or five years and I know there are plenty of channels out there that just skyrocket within six months. They got a million subscribers. Obviously that's not gonna happen to little old me. And I'm actually okay that I've gone for the whole slow burn. I can't imagine the pressure, especially for someone that's young, of having a channel and an audience that massive so quickly before you've even managed to find your feet with making videos and editing videos um, and find your voice. And I just, I can't imagine the pressure that those people would be under. So I actually relish the whole slow and steady. And I'm really, really proud. And I thank every single one of you for helping me get there. Right, let's get this day started with packing orders. I just had to upgrade the shirt. It's, um, we've got no heating in this room and it's really chilly today. So I've had to put on my fleece shirt. Oh, it feels better already. Still thick with cold. Hoping it's gonna do one soon though, because it's getting really, really boring now. It's hilarious. I feel like I'm doing the YouTube cha-cha-cha. It's like one step forward and two steps back, literally. Oh, well, we're around 20,000. That's all that matters. Oh, all my arty people out there. My beautiful um, oil painting from Ukraine. It's on this board and I don't know how to hang this on a wall. I don't want to frame it because I, I want to see the texture still. Um, I'd rather do it on the real cheap. Uh, I did contemplate popping staples in there, but I don't want to like damage paint in any way on this side. So yeah, any arty folk out there, please tell me how I can hang this, um, these two little oil paintings on the wall because I'm at a total loss and I want them up and I want to turn this into my art wall. Look how bare it is. It needs my little oil paintings up there. Thank you. If you're wondering what the noise is, Sassy's got her catnip toy. So she's just turned into a kitten for five minutes. She'll soon get bored and go to sleep. These envelopes are incredibly twee, but they're kind of cute. Robert, I promise I'm not sending you a love letter. It's just a really cute little envelope. Oh, this is an easy one, Herbert. Oi. <laughs> ah. As 
I've only got two of the minis left. I don't have any A5, so we need to make that order. So let's leave Robert's order there for a minute and see if we can get the other one made up and then we'll make his journal. So next we've got Helen's order and she's ordered two silver cable tidies. why but I've put them on the card in different ways it kind of looks a bit weird let's put them both the same way there's not a right or a wrong but it kind of looks a bit strange them both being different That's the little coffee bag that I was showing you in a recent video. And then it just comes with this little leaflet explaining a little bit about the company and um, the offer that if you wanted to subscribe and get your own coffee delivered. How cool is that? That's great. And very delicious. I have a little stash of washi tape and I do love them, but I never know what to use them for. Maybe I need to use them on my parcels. Oh my God, look, how cute are you? Adorable. I'm still finding my feet with the packaging. And I don't think I've wrapped one parcel the same as yet. I'm still trying to find my style, so thank you for letting me experiment on you all. I do love wrapping parcels. You might not know, but I used to work in a chocolate shop in a local village. Uh, you know, little individual chocolates and we'd box them up and tie the pretty ribbons all over it. And there is actually a chocolate box knot. Not entirely sure if it's the knot that I use on these. I'm gonna have to really think about that. But oh my God, I loved wrapping those boxes. And of course, come Christmas time, it was just box after box after box after box. We would do orders for businesses for their Christmas gifts for customers and staff. We would like be inundated with making and filling and wrapping boxes. It was heaven. I loved it. <laughs> I don't know if Maz, my old boss, watches these, but Maz, if you do, I need you to rate my wrapping. I'm a lot slower than I used to be. <laughs> and we didn't use brown cardboard and string. We used all the shiny, pretty things. I've gone backwards and forwards on this, on whether I save all my old packaging, like Amazon packaging and whatever, and I pull the label off um, and then I give them to people that do eBay and stuff and I've gone backwards and forwards on whether I should be using this for my products or not, whether it cheapens the brand. I think so many people get packages and they just throw this into the bin, not thinking like this needs to be reused, this needs to be reused again and again and again and again, the amount of energy and resources that has gone into creating this for it just to be used once and thrown away. So I... I don't know, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Obviously my products are kind of on the luxury side um, and I, I am a little bit concerned that it cheapens. Please everybody let me know down below your thoughts on this because it's a really important issue. <laughs> and I want everything to look lovely and I want people to receive their parcels and feel that there's a heck of a lot of love gone into it. Um, and I'm hopeful that that's what this part provides. Does it matter what this part arrives through the post in? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it really doesn't look very luxe, does it? Oh, tell me what to do, people. I really want to rip this jiffy bag off and wrap it in just brown paper. I think I'm going to do it because I don't think that brings anything of any 
joy and positivity to the table. I just, it looks crap. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to use brown paper. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. Forgot how to spell Helen then. have a quick little breakfast before I make Robert's journal. This is kind of first breakfast and I'm probably gonna have a fried egg on sourdough in a minute as well. But I just really fancy the cool crispness of an apple right now. It feels really good on my very sore throat. And the peanut butter, wow. Well, you gotta get your kick somewhere, right? Oh yeah, that works. Crikey, look at the colour of that yolk. Wow, that is a thing of beauty. Just thought I'd share my breakfast cooking with you. Why not? So this is the pouch where I keep all my templates. And I've just gone to find the template for my A5 journal for this order. And it's not in there. And I know I wouldn't have thrown it away. So... I think rather than spending God knows how long looking for it, I think we're just gonna make a new template, which isn't ideal, but it's ever so easy. It's just using cardboard really. So this is the template that I use for the small journal, the mini one. So we're just gonna do a bigger version of that, obviously. I've, I can get the measurements off my one. Um, yeah, that's really annoying. Sometimes it's just easier just to start over. Hmm. Okay, we've just had lunch, we've had tofu that was about two or three weeks out of date so keeping everything crossed that that doesn't backfire <laughs> tasted good um but i've just got an email from the printers so i'm gonna pop into town and pick up um the new prints for the foraging bags so you'll get a sneak peek of those in this video um and i need to go and pick up some glasses that are also ready so i'm gonna take probably the rest of the afternoon off of this so i will get back to this video and fulfilling this order for robert tomorrow good morning lovelies welcome back uh it is the next day it's no good that's not gonna work i'm not wearing makeup today because i've got the start of what could easily become a sty so i'm not putting anything on my eyes <laughs> Um, and I'm using a hot compress to try and break it up and hopefully prevent it turning into a full-blown raging sty. Uh, so I picked up the transfers yesterday. This is £80 worth, as in money, not in weight. This is £80 of transfers. I'm really hoping that I did them right and that they look good. Um, and I'm really hoping, obviously, that people like them. Who knows? Uh, I've also had a delivery of buckles. These are cute. Oh my gosh, I've got no idea. I've never worked with these before. Uh, this is the prototype for the foraging bag. I want um, like a clasp that holds the bag onto your handbag or onto your belt or onto whatever. Um, but I don't want to use these studs. I'm going to be using a buckle instead, which is completely new to me uh so hopefully we'll get a chance to get onto that today um i do need to make some a5 journals and get the um orders out and it's really really cold in here today and my cough is going down onto my chest so um i'm gonna pop my headphones on i'm gonna watch the end of the umbrella academy oh my god i do not want this series to end it's so blinking good. If you haven't seen it and you've got Netflix, please go and watch The Umbrella Academy. It's I've enjoyed it so, so much. Brilliant series. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to plug in, get these journals made, um, and then hopefully we can get on to printing the new foraging bags. Oh gosh, I've already seen a possible problem. Oh, and I picked up new readers yesterday and they're really strong compared to my last ones and they're making me feel a little bit squiffy. Um, I've already noticed one possible problem. That green is not the same colour as that green. That's like a grass green. That's like a more bluey green. Hey-ho! We're just going to put this to one side for a minute and not think about it. And let's get some journals made. Umbrella Academy commence. 
I just make the templates out of a lightweight cardboard um, and this is all I need to be honest I don't need anything fancier I have bought some acrylic templates before and they're really good to use they obviously last a very long time uh, but I don't honestly need the expense just a back of a cornflake box would work to be perfectly honest this is a new thing where I've been using a, a corner punch to actually give myself the perfect rounded corners. I get much better results um, with the finished leather goods when I use this hole punch on my templates. That has been a revelation. And then I just lay the template out onto the leather and I'm just looking at any marks or, um, or buffs or scars that are on the hide. Um, and if it's something like this, and if it's obviously, if it's for a customer, then I'm looking for the best possible piece of leather I can, whilst also avoiding waste where possible. Then I just score around it with an awl and then cut it out with a Stanley knife. Whenever I'm about to embark on cutting a new piece of um, leather or a new project, I always swap out my Stanley knife blade because they dull so quickly. Then I bevel the edges and I use the burnisher to give those nice shiny edges. Then I mark out and hole punch the holes for the elastic to go through. I include enough elastic with each order to hold three notebooks within each journal cover. And I think I should probably do a whole video on how I use my journal and give people ideas on how they can get the most out of theirs too. Then finally, I add this like belly band piece of elastic and this is what just holds your journal shut when you're not using it. I also include a bead on it as well. Um, this is my personal choice. Obviously, you can take that off. It's just held on by a knot, so you could obviously take that off and put your own kind of bead on there or whatever you fancy. I use this bead to open and close the elastic, but also visually it marks the front of my journal. But again, as you use your journal, you will find out what works for you. And I also include one notebook. It's honestly just a real cheap notebook. It's generally a lined paper notebook. And it's just there so that when you get your new journal through the post, you have something to start playing with. I don't recommend staying with a cheap notebook purely because I'm a notebook snob and I really like nice paper. I also personally prefer a dot grid because I just find it easier and smoother on my brain. I've also, one of my notebooks that I carry in this journal is also a sketch pad as well. So it's like quite a, a heavy cartridge paper for sketching and watercolor painting. If you can hear the purring, that's Sassy. She's come to say hello to you all. As I'm wrapping up this video, I realized I didn't film an outro for it. Um, I kind of got a little bit waylaid because after I cleared up, from making the journal and getting the parcels done. I opened up the big roll of transfers for my foraging bags and unfortunately it was not good. I had a big problem. Actually, I can't use them. So that whole £80 worth roll of transfers will probably end up in the bin. So now I've left you with that cliffhanger, I'm going to sign off and I will catch up with you in the next video.